There's a strange yellow globe in the sky today. It's kind of nice, sunny for once. It was really a wet, crappy week. Well, today is uh, October 5th, a Saturday, and it was a really slow week. Uh, field work wise for us on the farm because it was wet. We got close to two inches of rain this week About an inch and three quarters I guess was a total which put a damper on field work However, we were lucky enough on Monday and Tuesday to harvest our corn silage The rain system moved in around 2 30 Tuesday afternoon about an hour and a half after we finished corn silage So it's nice to have that job out of the way. Uh, we put up two bags. I'll put a card in the video here for those who might not follow Sandy on her channel. Uh, she has our corn silage documented uh, there uh, the two days we harvested. So uh, if you're interested in seeing corn silage harvested and some other sheep stuff, you can watch that video there. Basically after Tuesday, I uh, did office work. <laughs> the dreaded office work. We uh, Especially through the summer and the growing season when it's so nice outside it just I find it really really hard to Go inside and do office work. It kind of hangs over my head a little bit and does get a bit stressful because I know I got some stuff I had to get caught up on so I spent three days in the office getting caught up on stuff And I still have a little bit more to do, but uh, we're in a lot better shape uh, that way for some things so it was nice to kind of maybe get that off my plate and that stress off my off my mind as we do hopefully get into harvesting again. It being a weekend, I probably really should take a day off, but uh, I kind of feel like when it's sunny outside this time of year, uh, it's best to maybe get some work done uh, while the sun shines. So I am going to work around our grain handling system today to try to get it kind of cleaned up for uh, shipping out some wheat and making sure it's ready for corn harvest uh, and maybe the off chance we're going to have to dry some soybeans. Uh, as I said, it's October 5th and as we're getting into uh, shorter days and less friendly weather, uh, there is a risk that uh, we're going to have to maybe harvest some of our soybeans a little on the damper side and uh, do some handling on them in terms of drying. Well, I don't like to, but sometimes we don't have a choice. Prime example was uh, 2014 for us on the farm. We dried every crop. Uh, the wheat, every kernel of wheat was dried. All our white beans that we hauled to town uh, had a drying charge applied to them. Uh, all our soybeans were dried and we dry corn every year. Uh, we never harvest dry corn. We always have to dry corn, so that's uh, not unheard of. So that was a tough year. This year, we were lucky. We didn't have to dry any wheat. Uh, but soybeans we might have to and I'm not sure that I want to but I just want to make sure that we have that option So that's kind of logistically trying to figure out what's going to go on here But I think today I just want to give you a tour of our new dryer that we put in uh, It's a GSI top dry uh, installed by Horse Systems out of Elmira It got built last fall but uh, due to some shortness in time and concerns about corn quality with vomitoxin uh, We used our existing dryer last year and didn't really worry about getting this new top dry wired up. So uh, we got that done this summer and it's fully functional. And uh, I'm just gonna make sure it's uh, good to go and the leg and the pit and all that stuff is fully functional. So I'm gonna give you a tour of the top dry. Uh, first of all, we needed somewhere to put our controller and all the electronics and uh, all the electrical for the system. And so we bought a 20 foot C cam we call them or shipping container that uh, is used. I'll do a walk around the outside so you get an idea what it looks like and what we did. But on the inside here, what we did was framed up some two by four walls on the inside of it and insulated it. You can kind of see it's not quite done yet. Uh, insulated very vapor barrier and then put up uh, some plywood walls here to uh, hopefully keep it warm and uh, this is probably where whoever's hauling the grain is going to come in uh, under the window right here what we're going to do is have a countertop and we'll have our moisture tester up there so we're doing samples as each set of wagons comes in so that I know kind of from a operational standpoint around the dryer uh, what kind of corn moistures we have in the wet storage bin this kind of it's not quite done yet, but as you can see over my shoulder, we have some controllers here that help run the system and the one in the orange 
mustard color box, whatever you want to call it. There is the controller for the top drive. I'm going to go over the mechanical components of the top drive first, and then we'll get into talking about the electronics and the electrical that do all the controlling of the drying system and how, how it works functionally. But as I said, I'll go over the mechanical stuff first. Uh, right behind me is the top drive. It is a 30 foot diameter bin. It's circular, uh, as most people probably realize, and it's 11 rings high, and that's as high as you can build a top dry. So there's three options for size. There's a 24 diameter one, there's a 30 diameter one, and there's a 36. And as I said, the tallest you can ever get them is 11 rings high. And the unique thing about a top dry is, I'll show you, but at the very top, you can kind of see that different colored ring of the bin and that's kind of the drying zone and I'll go up there and show you. But after you get down so low or down underneath the drying floor, that's all grain storage here. And what's really nice about this system is that not only can we dry corn up top and that in the roof area, is that we also have grain storage underneath. And when you see these two yellow big fans here with the covers on them, those are the two burners that put heat up the ducts that go into the top area of the bin that actually heat up the corn and help remove the moisture out of the kernels. So it's a double burner which helps increase the capacity. The other small fan is an aeration fan and what an aeration fan does is that there's a floor inside the bin uh, that uh, elevates it off the concrete pad underneath and it's about I would say 12 to 14 inches high. And what that fan does right there is it takes outside air and pumps it up through the corn to cool it. So as you're cooling the corn underneath here, you're pushing hot air up to also help dry the corn. So it makes it super efficient uh, as a, a dryer for drying corn. So right behind me is the, the burner. So this thing actually, we're lucky enough on our road is that we actually have access to natural gas. So these burners run off of natural gas and they basically burn the gas to create heat that goes up these ducts, like I said, to heat the air to help dry the corn. So there's two 42 inch fans. So that's how wide the fans are. And they these two burners pump heat up and they're adjusted to run kind of high lows. So to maintain a temperature, they might burn high for a while. And then when it gets past that set point that we have, so if we have it set for 180 degrees, it will go into low and it will drop down a little bit uh, to say 177 and then it will go back up again to the high mode and go back up to a higher temperature to 180. So that's kind of how it, it fluctuates between high and low to maintain the set point we want to dry corn at. As I said, this is a little aeration fan that cools the corn. So we're just gonna go over to the top dry and go inside the bottom part of it before I go up to the upper part. But basically, it's just like a regular bin and I'll show you what that looks like. So we're just inside the bin. It's gonna be a little weird because of the echo, because uh, it's empty. So this is kind of what the inside looks like. Nothing too fancy. It's a little dark, my apologies, but it's never been used for anything yet. So uh, I'm looking forward to using it. But what you see here is uh, a power sweep and what that does is underneath the floor where you see this hole oops and this hole here uh, what that is is underneath is a u trough uh, with an auger in it and that's how the bin unloads these slides open up and the grain falls down into those augers and goes out and goes into uh, our conveyor system and then we can move it wherever we want with the grain leg but this power sweep in here goes around in a circle i think there's other guys on YouTube, farmers have shown what that kind of looks like, but it goes around and helps pull the corn into the center and clean up the bin. So that's kind of what that is. But under here, this is just kind of what a normal bin looks like. I'll show you what it looks like above me, because that's where the drying happens. So it's hard to see, but that's the ceiling up there. And it doesn't look like there's a drying floor up there, but there is. It's a perforated steel floor, uh, so the air movement can go through it. And right there, sorry about my finger being blurry, but right there and there is where the heat comes in from the two burners. And when I said there's a floor, this is a floor in the, the bin and it's perforated. So that air comes up through these holes uh, from that little fan outside and it pushes the air up through the grain 
uh, to dry it. So and right there is the unload auger for that bin for the top dry. So it basically goes over and dumps into our pit area here that goes into this conveyor that goes up to our leg. And that's how we empty it. So it can hold, my guess, uh, we're looking at drying corn. It'll hold about uh, 16,000 bushels, to 16 to 19,000 bushels uh, before we have to unload it and make more room for corn to kind of drop down out of the uh, drying area on the top of the bin uh, down into the storage area underneath where it's cooled. Whew. I'm out of shape or I gotta breathe when I climb and not hold my breath. <laughs> Give me a minute. So this platform I'm on right now, I'm just about to the top of the bin. I'm about two rings down from the top. And this doorway here is a way to get access to uh, the grain side of the storage from the top. Once we go to the very top, we're impeded by the drying floor. So the only way to access the grain side of the storage is through this little door. It's a long way down. Oh, it's a little breezy up here, but we're at the top of the top dry. And it's got a nice ladder system here, kind of like a stairs and a nice ring around the top for safety. And there's a little bit of a ducting here uh, at the top to help get rid of some air and hopefully not have too much air go up the downspout of the grain leg. So let's hop inside the drying chamber. Whew. Now that we're uh, in out of the wind, uh, we can take a look at what the top of a top dry looks like and the drying chamber that the grain sits in uh, to be dried before it drops down into the storage area. So that's kind of what it looks like. We have all these right here vents that when there's positive air pressure from the burners and the aeration fan, they'll push open uh, to help get rid of the air and steam that's coming off the crop, the water we're taking off it. But as you can see, here is kind of the ring, uh, the top ring that I was talking about on the outside, that different colored one, the darker one. And there's a flange that kind of comes off the side here and goes down. And this is the drying area said where the crop's going to sit and these bands here basically hold the crop kind of in tiers and there's three tiers uh, the way ours is set up ours is set up as an auto flow so there's a top tier with basically just a wet grain holding storage and it starts to warm up a little bit the second tier is a process that begins the drying of the grain and starts getting rid of a little bit of moisture and warming up the grain even more. And this last area that we're sitting in is actually more of the drying area or where most of the drying happens uh, to the grain. So it kind of is three levels and it's kind of three stages of drying. And uh, what, when we set the dryer, most of the parameters that we're doing uh, are all for this kind of chamber that we're sitting in right now where the most of the drying happens. So as you can see, it's a perforated floor and that's how the air from the burners come up through the, the floor. And basically, it's like this around the whole bin and it makes it really nice to clean out because as you can see, there's just a little bit of corn there, but all you do is have, you might have a little bit of corn or crop that sits in these areas and you just gotta go around the edge of the bin quick and just kinda flick them out. Nothing too major. Now, you might be asking, what are these holes in the side? That's where the grain's dropped out of this column here. And I'll get into how the grain dryer works or the top dryer works in terms of settings, but basically when it hits its certain parameters and it's considered the corn in this outer ring column dry, it will open up chutes on the side, and basically what happens is the chutes lower, grain falls out of those uh, rectangular holes that are all along the edge and drop down into the storage area for a certain parameter of time, and then they go closed again, and it holds the grain in there. So there's uh, those chutes everywhere. It's not super fancy, uh, not much to show you up here. There's a whole bunch of sensors that uh, are all there for running the dryer. Uh, there's one kind of right behind me that you can see sticking out there and that's likely a temperature probe 
that measures the grain temperature uh, that helps make adjustments on the dryer. What you can't see right now is that if I had the uh, door open that we came through to look at the bottom part of the grain bin, there would be more light coming in and you can actually see the floor of the dryer or the floor of the bin underneath. And I'm not afraid of heights. They don't bother me. But this is a little freaky because when you look down through these perforated screens, you can actually see the floor beneath you and you're kind of to me it's like walking on a glass floor in a very high building and you look down and you can see a whole bunch underneath you and you're walking on it that freaks me out a little bit i like having a solid platform underneath me don't get me wrong but i like it not to be see -through. these burners I forgot to mention at maximum temperature they're 5.4 million BTUs so both of them together uh, adds up to 10.8 BTUs 10.8 million BTUs so that's kind of maximum I don't think we'll be pushing the envelope on those with the corn kind of going to be quite wet this fall we're gonna have to watch our uh, temperatures because if you actually dry corn too hot you can get some uh, cracking of the kernel and then it leads to fines and dockage and uh, we don't want that. On the electrical side, this panel here is what uh, I guess is kind of an intermediate in terms of running it. But this uh, dryer is all set up to run off of PLCs. I'm not sure what the definition is. I'll try to type it in the video here. But basically all the important gizmos, fancy word, are kind of in here that control all different facets of the dryer. Burner, high, low cycling, messaging, uh, fill, uh, how to fill it. You know, if it's too, uh, if the storage part of it's too full, it'll shut down the burners. All that kind of stuff happens in here. And it's all controlled by a motherboard or brain inside the shipping container. And it basically just communicates via a category five or internet to ethernet cable. So the ethernet cable kind of comes in here and then it basically tells all this stuff what to do. And it in turn sends messages and info back to the controller uh, so I can see what's happening. It's pretty neat. We used to have a lot less technology on our dryer when I came home in 97. Uh, it was basically a dial and a timer and you set the heat and you set the timer and it worked. But now uh, this stuff uh, makes it a lot easier to manage and we do a better job of drying. So that's kind of the brains uh, in terms of electrical control stuff happens here and sends messages uh, messages all over to the dryer and then I can go in and show you the controller board that runs the dryer. So I got the screen on here and uh, I'll just kind of give you a really quick overview. I'm not going to go too in depth on it because uh, I don't want to bore you to death on how a dryer works. So here's the uh, top dry panel that controls the dryer and where I set all the parameters uh, for drying. And all these switches along the bottom here uh, do different things and they need to be uh, on for it to run. So, you know, we have the aeration on, off and auto and based on the settings, uh, if we have it on auto, it will, uh, I believe, I could be wrong, but I believe it will shut off as the system refills with grain after it drops a little bit out uh, that's dry out of the top area uh, of this top area up here on the pitcher. Um, you can have it set to just on and it runs all the time regardless. This is a load system which we would want to have in auto uh, for how we want to run it here so when it calls for grain uh, to go into the top of the dryer into the drying column it will turn on and do what it has to do. Just the fans and the burners is here uh, the heat on and on and then some of the areas here where we can uh, have it set up to dump it uh, manually. Uh, we can do an open and close on it uh, or we can have the system uh, so it won't dump into the school. But 99% uh, of the time it's going to be an auto and just the start and stop for the dryer. Now this is a screen. It's a touch screen that we use to do the different drying things. So right now uh, we would have a burner. The plenum temperature is basically your burner temperature and you can go in here and set it for whatever you want. So for corn, we'll probably dry at 180 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll put that in and I'll switch that over to 180. This is the set point for the grain. So the way the system works on the top dry is that it will take up the grain temperature in this outer ring of the top dry column, the drying column here, this outer ring. Uh, when the temperature of the grain reaches 
reaches 130 degrees based on this set point of 130. It will open up those chutes I talked about at the top and it will dump grain down into this bottom area for three seconds and then those will close again and the system will refill with corn to get it back up to level based on these two indicators here give us how much grain is the height of the grain in the system and it will basically shut off the flow. As I said, once it hits this temperature, it drops the grain down to the bottom column and it refills the system, fires up the burners again, and then it will run until it hits the set point of 130 and it will drop the grain and then redo the system. So that's why the system's called an auto flow because it just keeps filling itself up with grain again and dropping dried hot corn or hot grain down the bottom area of this bin to be cooled by the aeration fan. So like I said, uh, when the system runs, it's pumping cool air in here and pushing hot air up through the grain. These two burners are putting hot grain up into this area as well. And that's the air that we use to dry the, the grain in the drying area up here. It's kind of a quick and dirty explanation of how the top dry works in settings. And there isn't really much more to do around there other than as we get into different crops, we'll have different set points. Uh, so wheat, we wouldn't want to dry very hot. So we might do a maximum of 100 degrees Fahrenheit. If we're doing soybeans, we we'll would probably be 90 degrees Fahrenheit. And we'll have a, a lot lower set point based on some drying charts that were provided by Horst and GSI based on historical, historically running these systems in different grains. Um, so those are the big things that we probably would change. The most on the system, this we won't change. And then drying time is about the only other thing we'll do. We'll just make sure that this, I don't think it really matters because we'll have it set so that this is the parameter that uh, will drop, open the chutes and drop the corn if it's considered dry. So pretty simple. The nice part about this whole system is that I can access it online and look at what's going on from the combine, from anywhere, from my mobile phone. And if I feel I need to change some of the parameters in here, I can do that with my cell phone right from the combine cab or anywhere I have internet access, which makes the system really cool. That's basically kind of how the dryer works and the kind of mechanical and electrical components together and kind of how the system functions. As I said, it basically works off temperature and when it hits that certain temperature, it drops the grain in the bottom of the bin and refills and starts the process all over again. So, so when I'm talking about uh, capacity or drying capacity of the new top dry that we installed, um, this being the 30 foot diameter one. My guess is based on the corn moistures we're gonna harvest this fall and temperatures I plan on using and I'm kind of hoping we're gonna be dry in that. Low end would be 500 bushels an hour. Upper end would be about 750 bushels an hour. And I think, you know, how would that compare to our old dryer? Uh, we're probably not quite tripling our drying capacity or my guess would be we'd be pretty close to tripling our drying capacity. So, you know, when I look at it uh, in terms of time and us where we live, we struggle with uh, lake affect snow uh, kind of mid-November on uh, we have that risk uh, that we want to get corn drying done you know as quickly and as efficiently and cost effectively cost effectively as possible so you know on our old dryer we probably would have been about six weeks six weeks of drying for the amount of corn we grow uh, at the moistures that we'll probably end up having to harvest this fall versus I'm hoping that we can do it in about two weeks uh, this year even with the higher moisture corn we might not we might be three weeks depending on the weather. But you know, that's kind of the issue that we face on our geography and why we really felt we need to uh, update our drying capacity. The old dryer that we have there, we had the same one since 2007. So I guess that would be um, 12 drying seasons it went through. And just in that small, well, it doesn't feel like a small amount of time, but just in that time frame, genetic advancements in corn and production methods have really increased the yields on our farm. So uh, we're just dealing with more product and the result of needing more storage and the result of looking at needing to increase our drying capacity, especially when we run into tougher harvest conditions like we have had. Actually, the last three harvests have been a bit of a struggle. So yeah, just that extra capacity really is gonna make a big difference for us. So I get asked a lot uh, by people, you know, why a top dry, why not kind of a, a different kind of dryer? Why not uh, a bigger three phase version of the dryer that I have? You know, sometimes there's a tower dryers, which basically is a circular dryer that's works on the same principles as my Super B that I have over there. As I said, the biggest reason why we went the top dry is that um, there's a few people that have them in the area that I uh, really respect their opinion on and they've had very good success with the top dry. Secondly, 
it's a very, very cost effective way to buy a dryer and get some grain storage as well. The, basically the way I look at it is that 19,000 bushels of storage underneath that whole drying chamber at the top of the bin is almost free storage because when you were to price out the same capacity dryer, uh, similar to like what my Super B would be, it's almost the same price as this whole system, the whole top dry. So we're getting really, really cost effective storage, which is what we needed along with the dryer uh, capacity increases, which we needed. So I'm really looking forward to using it this year. Hope it works out and I, I really expect it will. And just a big shout out to all those who helped make this system turn into reality. I uh, appreciate it, Horse Systems, uh, Lakeshore Electrical. Team effort, really happy with how it turned out. Uh, if you have questions about the system, I'll try to answer them. Uh, there'll be some updates uh, in terms of video in the future when we get into corn harvest of how the system work is working. We'll have it kind of showing it up and running and different aspects of it and you know how we're feeling about its performance. But overall, pretty pumped about uh, using it this fall. So that's this week's video because as you can see, there's puddles everywhere and Mark's not in a tractor, so Mark's sad. But hopefully, hopefully this week we can get back in the fields. Uh, on a side note, that wheat that Sandy planted, I'll put the card for that video in here as well. It's up and looks good, so pumped about that. But anyways, if you've got questions about the system, I'll try to answer them and we'll get into more exciting stuff, hopefully this week, uh, back into the combine and some more field work harvest stuff. So uh, with that, thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.